Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything keeps falling apart. Yeah. You try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on Let your fears Welcome to a Time for Truth show. It's my pleasure to have you back again with us and I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialco. Tonight, we're going to actually be presenting a very special guest and our theme is going to be what makes this country such a great country. Our diversity, our ingenuity, leadership, and ability to accept each other and move forward. And uh, I'm really anxious to introduce him. So, Engineer Buddha, if you put up the pictures of our guest tonight, the Honorable Johnny Ford, please. And I'm going to introduce him to our viewers. Here he is. The Honorable Johnny Ford is founder and secretary general of the World Conference of Mayors. He's a graduate of Tuskegee Institute High School with a BA in history and sociology from Knoxville College, a master's of public administration from Auburn University and recipient of four honorary doctorate degrees. He's also founding president of Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance Incorporated. Mr. Ford was first mayor of Tuskegee in 1972 as one of the first black mayors ever in Alabama. And after serving six terms as mayor, he ran for and won state representative of the 82nd district from Macon County. In 2003, he became Alabama's first black Republican in the state legislature in more than 100 years. Quite a man. Mr. Ford is president of the Johnny Ford and Associates Incorporated Association and was appointed to the Presidential Advisory Committee on Federalism and the U.S. Intergovernmental Policy Advisory Committee on Trade. He's the past president of the Alabama League of Municipalities and is a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, the founding president of Tuskegee Optimist Club, an ambassador for the state of the African diaspora and former chair and board member of the National Black Leadership Commission on Health. And Buddha, if you put him up on the screen, I want to bid a warm welcome to our guest, the Honorable Johnny Ford. There he is. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Ford. I'm glad to be here, especially since I was elected in 1872. You don't realize you said that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, you're a, you're good a, evening, well, bonjour, come on, tally -boo. How are you, doctor? I am just delighted uh, to to be with you. And I would only do this for you and for my good friend, Bobby Hunter, because you saw my beautiful wife. Uh, she's in the hospital, and I've got to go back to the hospital to see her. So as soon as I finish, I'll be on my way, but I'm just delighted to be able to join you for this television special program, okay? Well, absolutely. I want to thank you for taking the time, and I, uh, we want to send her 
and all our viewers, all our good thoughts that she heals real quick and gets out of that hospital. Thank you so much. You know, you talk about me being a history maker. She's a real history maker in this family. The first woman, the first African-American woman, chief United States magistrate judge in the United States of America, appointed by uh, President Jimmy Carter and served 30 years on the bench here in Boston, served as chair of the Judicial Council, the voice of the black judges in America. So uh, I love her and appreciate her very much. And I'm going to do this program for you. And then I'll be off to be by her bedside. OK? Well, we're very thankful. And you let her know that we're very appreciative that she gave us the time and that you know, when she gets out of the hospital, we're going to do a show with her. How's that sound? Oh, yeah. She'll be uh, delighted. Joyce Alexander Ford. Joyce London Alexander Ford. Okay. All right. Let's well, get down to it. Tell me, uh, I asked you with that distinguished name of yours, your origin, and you said Cuba. That's outstanding. You know, just the other day, we had a conference call with the ambassador uh, from Cuba. Uh -huh talking about uh -huh. building a bridge, twin cities, between cities in the United States and the rest of the world and Cuba through our Twin Cities program. A uh, very positive, positive conversation because uh, like many in this country, I was hesitant uh, to approach Cuba because uh, certainly I had heard about the, the Cuba uh, crisis and all of that. But I am just delighted to have had that conversation. It was very, very positive. Well, you know what? It's very interesting how God works his ways. Because aside from being born in Cuba, back in 2014, I bought a, a dental delegation since I'm a dental surgeon for 40 years in New York City. I brought 18 dentists down to Cuba. And we actually were building bridges uh, with the dental society down there. We went to visit their school in Havana. We went to visit their school out on the uh, eastern portion, uh, actually the western portion of the island, which actually serves the whole Caribbean. And you know what? It makes even more sense now that you're bringing this up while we're here together. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting. Let, let's continue, like you said, let's get with it. I want to ask you something because you and Before your you wife, that, and no doctor, doctor, excuse, excuse yes. me, more super player. Before you get to that, let me just mention, I'm very proud of what Cuba is doing from a medical standpoint in terms of providing doctors and medical support and, and, the, and the historic breakthroughs they've had in terms of research with COVID and finding a cure for COVID and how effectively they are dealing with it. But when we went to, when I took the World Conference of Mayors to Haiti after their uh, earthquake and disaster, I was so uh, wonderfully surprised to see all of those Cuban doctors there helping out. There were some 40 medical students from Howard University in Washington, but there were Cuban physicians and medical personnel all over Haiti. And I just commend them for their humanitarian effort. Okay, thank you. Well, you know what? Uh, I gotta tell you something. My father was a Cuban physician, so he would be very happy to hear those words coming out of, you know, from, from you. Yeah. And they, what, you know what's probably gonna happen? There's gonna be a world mayor's conference in Cuba. And you know what? If you wanna invite me along, I'd be more happy to go there. Well, I'd love to convene such a conference because when we held, held a meeting in Haiti, our State Department said, well, you can't go to Haiti, it's too dangerous. Yet I uh, went around them, you know, in a, in a professional way and spoke directly to the ambassador. And the ambassador said, most definitely, we want you here. And sure enough, uh, we were invited by uh, the Haitian mayors. I organized a national conference of Haitian mayors just like I organized a national conference of black mayors in the United States. And so they hosted us and we had a very productive conference. And, and from this day on, we now have an ongoing re relationship where we are supporting uh, 
uh, the Haitian people, our mayors, from mayor to mayor, whenever they have a disaster, we are there to help from a humanitarian standpoint. Okay, that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful thing. I want to ask you, how did you decide as a young man to embark on your political career? It's interesting. I, I often tell the story when I was thirteen, and I've got a couple of my classmates who still remind me, Lonnie and Carver and James and Sonny. We would stand on the outside of the public park in downtown Tuskegee and watch the little white boys and girls swimming in the swimming pool. And I looked up on the, the big concrete gate. There was a bronze plaque that said, Mayor Frank Carr. We would have to peep through the fence and watch them swimming in the swimming pool. We couldn't go in. And I said to my buddies, you know, the mayor of this town must be a powerful dude. And I remember using that word, a powerful dude. If he can keep us out of this park, one day I want to be mayor of Tuskegee and open up this park so that all of the children can run and play uh, in our city and swim and play baseball. And they said to me, man, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. And uh, I still remember that. And they still remind me that we had that, that discussion because the little white kids would swim in the public swimming pool and we would have to swim in the swimming hole. But before we could swim in the swimming hole, we had to run the water moccasins and the snakes out of the swimming hole. That's why they call us the, the lake snakes. But we were some tough kids. But that was the beginning of my wanting to become an elected official. And I never lost uh, that desire went to work for Bobby Kennedy as a political strategist. Uh, Dr. King was killed in April and then in June, we were all there in California with Senator Kennedy, uh, along with Charles Evers, John Lewis, Percy uh, Galamison, uh, Earl Graves, um, um, all of us uh, indicated that after the after Senator Kennedy was assassinated, that we were going to go back across America, back to the South, and run for office and get involved. John Lewis went back to Atlanta and ran for the city council. Jay Cooper back to Pritchard, Alabama. David Dickens went back to New York and became mayor of New York. Charles Evers, the brother of Megar Evers, went back to Fayette, Mississippi, became mayor of Fayette, Mississippi. And I went back to Tuskegee, Alabama, and in 19... 72 became the first uh, African-American mayor of Tuskegee, Alabama. So that's how I got involved in politics and, and I've been involved ever since as a mayor, as a legislator, now as a city council member, and now as an ambassador to the state of the African diaspora. Well, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you on here. You know, I look forward to meeting you down in Florida, you're being, uh, I can see why you've gotten so much accomplished. And it's a great message for those youth out there who are watching this show to realize that they can do something about it. And your example shows that if you really want to, that you can get it done. And that's, a, that's, a, that's, I commend you. You know, that's now beautiful. You, now, I know you, are, you just talking there. But I really would love to have you uh, at our conference. As a matter of fact, you could probably do a live uh, show from the conference because uh, the World Conference of Mayors and at least uh, 10 or 12 other national organizations will be joining us for our collaboration conference. The theme this year is Conquering COVID and other challenges facing the families of the world. And it would be very appropriate. We have invited uh, the Cubans uh, to join us. Uh, hopefully some of their mayors can get permission from the State Department uh, to join us and be a part of our conference. We're gonna have mayors from, uh, officials from Ecuador, Guinea, from Gambia, from Ghana, from Senegal, from Trinidad, and across, across uh, Canada from the US, this will be an 
an international meeting where those of us who are elected officials who have to deal with the COVID crisis on a day by day basis will come together, get the most up to date information. I was in touch with the White House last week inviting the president and members of his administration. In particular, I'm going to invite the Surgeon General and other top officials from the CDC and others to come and give us firsthand information on what we can do as locally elected officials to conquer this COVID crisis. Uh, the president uh, is right. He's doing what he can do at the local, at the national level. Well, you know what? It's my pleasure to come and I will see what I can do to arrange so we have that show live from your conference down in Florida. I thought my every pleasure. time I, my phone rings, it interrupts. It, 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 yeah, but it's okay, no problem. I, I got the message, so I want to mention something to you that's very interesting Please. because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you know something. I actually represent the largest non-governmental drug education program in the world called Drug wow. Free World. And Bobby, Bobby Hunter is a big proponent of it. He's taken it to Super Bowls. He's taken it everywhere. So, you know, it, it would be my pleasure because in between COVID and the drug problem, there's 100,000 Americans died this year from drug overdoses. And with all the stress of COVID, Definitely, we need to do something about drugs because we don't want to lose any more Americans. So, you know, and if you have a spot open for me to speak about what's going on with drugs and this program is free to the mayors, it has no cost. We would love, our, our institution would love to give it to the cities, protect the kids, the youth. And, you know, I'm sure Bobby can tell you some more about it. So I would be more than happy to come. Consider yourself, you are on the program. Uh, we'll have a top spot for you. I have uh, as my uh, keynote speaker, Dr. William Bell, the president of the Casey Family Program uh, Foundation from Seattle. He's gonna be talking about working together to support our young people so that no longer will we need foster care. We'll have the kind of society where all of our young people can have an equal access uh, to uh, being brought up in a world uh, supported by their own families. But the whole idea of drug fighting, the drug pandemic, it is a pandemic, doctor, in this world and in our nation. My own dear precious daughter, my Christmas baby, I call her, is in a rehab uh, facility uh, today. Bless her heart. She's just a uh, a young lady that just grew up fast and uh, it's, it's an illness, it's an illness. And we have to um, find a way uh, to, to help our young people uh, get on the right track. It's, a, it's an illness, it's curable, it's livable, you can live with it and, and overcome it. So um, uh, my family has had that challenge uh, and uh, I want all the families out there to know that there is hope uh, not on the way, but there's hope now. There's help now available, and I commend you for what you are doing. Let us help you. I have a network of mayors in this country and around the globe who will be more than uh, happy to join with you. Bobby Hunter has done an outstanding job of linking me to people like yourself, and uh, we are going to work together along with the Globe Trotters. And with your organization, we can conquer not only COVID, but we can conquer uh, this this uh, uh, this pandemic uh, caused by drugs in our society. Let's do it. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I totally agree with you. And I wanted for our viewers to know, because I know you know this, but the United Nations Conference back in 2016 on drug usage came up with a consensus that we had to educate, not incarcerate, that we had to not put people in jail, that we had to give people the correct, the truthful information so that they wouldn't be lied to, so they could avoid drugs to begin with. And some interesting statistics is that it was shown that when the parents had a chance 
to get the truthful information and educate their kids, those kids were 40% less likely to ever use drugs. And one other thing that came out is that if we were able to educate them before they became 21, and we made them safe while they were young and suggestible, then more than likely the rest of their lives they would be safe. So I, I look forward to working with you. And, you know, I thank God and Mr. Bobby Hunter uh, for bringing us together on this show. Let's do it. Let's, we've enough talk about it. Uh, hey, you got, you, I'm serious now. You got a date. Let's do this. Okay. We're going to do it. I'm, re I'm ready to talk. No problem. And I will be ready okay. to work with you. Okay. And so, but you know, this show is about, this show is, a, this show is about you. And I guess the next question I have for you, what would you like to see happen in the United States of America and the world? Well, togetherness, building a bridge between the peoples of the world is what we were all about. When I organized the uh, World Conference of Mayors, Conference Mondiale des Mayors, uh, it grew out of the Sister Cities program, People to People. Uh -huh. uh, my city, Tuskegee, Alabama, which incidentally, uh, don't get me started, but I am proud to have been the mayor of historic Tuskegee, Alabama. Uh, the home of Tuskegee University, the home of the flying, fighting Tuskegee Airmen. And I am a pilot and honorary Tuskegee Airman. We are the land of Dr. Booker T. Washington and Dr. George Washington Carver. And of course, uh, we are proud of, of our history and our heritage. And so Tuskegee and Banjul, the Gambia, the ancestral home of Alex Haley, entered into a sister city program. I took a delegation from Tuskegee University, from the department of, from the School of Agriculture, the School of Architecture, School of Business, over to look at the problems in Africa to find out what we could do to help. We came back, wrote it up, uh, sent it to the Fort, um, not that we sent it to the World Bank and USAID got funded, funded I got money to help them rebuild their marketplace in downtown Banjo, the Gambia. And so I said to the mayor, as we walked along the west coast of Africa, along the beach following breakfast, I said to the mayor, Mayor Monday, you know, Mr. Mayor, it makes sense. African mayors and African-American mayors working together, building a bridge between our cities. You see, I was able to help you do something tangible. I help you get money to rebuild your market, not just talk, but we did something to help you. He said, yes, Johnny, it makes sense. I said, what we need to do is organize a world conference of mayors that brings us together. And he said, let's do it. And sure enough, the idea was born in 1977 for the Conference Mondiale des Mayors. What would I like to see? I'd like to see those kinds of bridges built between the peoples of the world, people to people around the world. And we can do it. Uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Desmond Tutu, uh, he and I both received a, a similar award a few years ago by an organization called Blacks in Government. But Desmond Tutu was a shining example of uh, a quest for world peace and tranquility and standing up against racism and injustice in this country. Uh, that's what I want to see in this world, a world where we can break down the barriers that have kept us apart so long, uh, a world that has the ability to overcome the differences in the color of our skin or our different languages or the distance that divide us. Uh, a, a world that will bring us together. We can do it, doctor, if we uh, just make up our minds and get the ball rolling. If we can put a man on the moon and, 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 and go to the farthest distance in space, we can overcome the distance here that separates us upon this planet. And so we've got to fight, first of all, to save our planet. We've got to address this climate control. Uh, we've got to do something about that. We've got to try to uh, seek peace and build 
and, and, and to beat our, our swords into plowshares and study war no more. We've got to build the kind of world that all of us can learn to respect and accept each other as equal. That's what Dr. King fought and died for. That's what Bobby Kennedy was working for. Those are men that I work with and Mrs. Rosa Parks. Now, incidentally, Doc, I, I need your support on your show. I'm pushing for a national holiday in honor of Mrs. Rosa Parks, who was born in my town, Tuskegee, Alabama, February wow. 4th, 1913, a national holiday. She will be the first woman. No national federal holiday has been ever granted the United States of America for a woman, an American woman. And if we get this done, Rosa Parks would be the first woman, just as she was the first woman to lie in the state national capital. So that's one of the movements that we are supporting at our national conference. I, I invite you to join with us in that movement. I, well, you know, you know what I was going to say is what I would love to do is you pick the person that we should interview regarding Rosa Parks so that we can make yes. a show about her great yes. works, about her accomplishments, and so that, you know, this can become a reality. Uh, yes. I wanted to, to share something with you, and I'm oh. so happy. I'm so happy that Mr. Hunter introduced us today. I'll tell you why. Since I was a little boy, I looked at people and I would say, why are they fighting with each other? We have so many things that we provide for each other. And if you had all the money in the world, but you were all alone, you would have nothing. But if you have all these other human beings with you in coordination, in collaboration, what ends up happening, crime disappears. That's right. What happens That's is when ha murder disappears, caring comes in. And when you get hurt, your friend will help you. And that friend will be of any creed, religion, race. Makes, to me, it's, you know, I got to give you a joke. My office in New York City, that I invite you to come one day, and you're going to have a cleaning in my office. I'm a periodontal surgeon, implant surgeon. My office is known as the United Nations of Dentistry because I've got the whole. <laughs> <laughs> you kid. Oh, I was. Absolutely. I was I was just in New York last week, uh, honoring Congressman Charlie Rango, uh, okay. the, the, uh, the Lion of Lennox. Uh, we honored him uh, uh, during the Memorial Day weekend in Tuskegee during our Black Wall Street ceremony. He could not come, but, so Queen Mother Blakely, who is the community mayor of Harlem, sure, invited sure. us. So we, so we took uh, the honoring uh, to him at City College. And it was so interesting. Uh, our city college is right down the street from where I lived in my first apartment in New York, 140, 141st in Amsterdam. And I took a picture wow. of my apartment is still there. But I was in New York, uh, in Harlem, where I got my start. Uh, it was right down the street when Malcolm X was killed uh, that night. And uh, it was just good to be back in New York. So I've got a We've got to come to New York to the United Nations well, you're, you're, dentistry. <laughs> you 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 were invited to my office. Unfortunately, what I was going to tell you, we've run out of time okay. on the show. And Great. you know, uh, tell your wife that you know I, I I really wish her well. All of our viewers wish her well. Thank her for letting you come because the wife is very important. I love my wife too, and I know that I wouldn't have gotten the things done in my life without her support. So thank you for being on the show. I look forward to seeing you soon. And uh, for those let's viewers out let's there, do it. I guess, let's do it. And for those viewers out there, I want you to learn from Mr. Johnny Ford. You can do it and just do it. Let's do it. Season's greetings. God bless to everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go Everything keeps falling apart Yeah You try to do your best But 
only God knows not you Given everything you've got The world takes you down You just keep Moving on At your feet 